Hello everyone, my name is Xiang Li, a second year PhD student from Peking University. Today, my talk is about theoretic understanding of a typical optimization method in federated learning, which is named as federated average or fed average. This work is a joint work with Kai Xuan Huang, Wen Hao Yang, Professor Su Shen Wang, and Professor Zhi Hua Zhang. Before diving into the detail of fed average and other main results, Let's first recall some background on federated learning. The incredible growth of data value and the heavy burden of data storage necessitated multiple work nodes to collaborate the model training, which caused the birth of distributed learning. Conventional distributed learning requires centralized training data in one machine or data center and then perform optimization method to feed models. However, the centralized method is privacy instructive since the process of data uploading may result privacy leakage. As a special case of distributed learning, federated learning emerges as a solution to the privacy issue. It allows multiple parties, for example, your smartphones, to collaboratively train a model without data sharing. Specifically, federated learning lets the user devices perform most of the computation locally, and a central parameter server update the model parameters using the descending direction returned by the user devices. However, federated learning has three unique characters that distinguish it from the standard distributed learning. First, the training data are massively distributed over an incredibly large number of devices, and the connection between the central server and the device is slow. A direct consequence is that the communication is slow and it is important to overcome the communication bottleneck, which motivates a lot of communication efficient faculty learning algorithms. Second, the FL system does not have control over users' devices. For example, when a mobile phone is turned off or a Wi-Fi access is unavailable, the central server will lose connection to this device. Such a non-responding or inactive device is called as a straggler. It will appear tremendously slower than the other devices, so we can't expect all the work nodes will be activated successfully when we begin to train the model. We call this situation as partial device participation. Third, the training data are non-ID. Here precisely we mean the data is non-identically but independently distributed. So a device local data cannot be regarded as samples drawn from the overall distribution. This follows from the fact that the training data are kept locally and not allowed to be uploaded to the center. By contrast, traditional distributed learning often shuffles and redistributes the data. So the data is evenly distributed and almost identical distributed. This heterogeneity does not only bring challenges to algorithm design, but also make the theoretic analysis much harder. Here is the problem setup of federated learning. We want to minimize FW in a distributed manner. FW is a weighted sum of n local objective functions where n is the number of devices and pk is the weight. The case device holds the nk training data, which is independently sampled from the distribution dk. Each local objective is an empirical risk evaluated on the local data. As mentioned, data is massively distributed, so n could be very large. The data is non-ID, so dk varies among devices. In addition, the, the, weight is, the weight is often set so that it is proportional to nk, which is the number of local data sites. A typical optimization method to solve the mentioned problem is fed average. The algorithm runs in the following way. At each communication round, let's say t, the central server first sample a random small set of devices and broadcast the latest, latest global model, WT, to all activated devices. Then, every activated device, say the case, receives the latest global model and then performs e-steps of local updates in the following way. 
we can say that the E steps of log updates are actually E steps of independence and gradient design using local data. Finally, the center aggregates the local model parameters to produce the new global model in some prescribed manner. Typically, it is a weighted average of local parameters returned by all activated sets, where the weight is proportional to the local data size nk. We can say that the reason why fat average is communication efficient is twofold. First, it only activates a small portion of devices, which is also the meaning of partial device participation as mentioned. So the Straggler effect can be alleviated. Second, it performs several update steps on a local model before communicating with other workers, which saves communication. Local updates reduce the communication frequency, however, make each local model parameters become more different before synchronization. This week made the theoretic analysis much harder. The situation is much worse when the data is non-ID. Previous work mainly focused on simplified cases. When data are ID and all devices are active, fat weight average is referred to local SGD. And many previous work have analyzed local SGD theoretically and empirically. For example, Lin shows the superiority of local SGD empirically and many other work analyze log SGD theoretically. The theoretic analysis of log SGD is much easier than fat average due to the two assumptions. However, the two assumptions violate the second and third characters of fat weight learning. Interestingly, fat probes, which is another communication efficient fat weight learning algorithm, doesn't require the two assumptions. What's more, it incorporates fat weight learning as a special case. They achieve this by adding a proxima turn and penalize each local parameters move to away from the latest global model. However, their theory fails to cover fat average since the proxima turn is always required in their theory. Therefore, the theoretic understanding of fat average under more realistic settings is unclear, which is our focus. Our first result is, is to derive the convergence rate of convergence of fabric learning under more realistic setting, namely partial device participation and non id data. Under some regularity conditions like strongly convexity and smoothness, the global objective SWT converges at the speed of 1 over t. The speed also depends on two terms. The first is denoted by b, which characterize the effects of non-ID and local updates. The non-ID in our paper is measured by gamma. Here is the expression of gamma, where f star is the minimal value of the global objective function, and f k star is the minimal value of the kth local objective function. We can see that gamma could be always non-negative. When the data is ID or nearly ID, Gamma can be very small. However, if the data is quite non-ID, gamma can be quite large, and the convergence rate will be slowed down. Besides, we can see that the larger E, the larger B, and the slow convergence rate. So local updates actually slow down the convergence rate. The second term is denoted by C, which is related to the way how each activated set is formed. For the case of full device participation, C will be exactly zero, otherwise it will be positive. So partial device participation will actually slow down the convergence rate. Besides, if we want the, the global function value as wt to be epsilon optimal. The required communication round is roughly this quantity. 
we can see that the quantity is inversely proportional to k, and k is the number of activated devices. So larger activated sets will fasten convergence in terms of communication. Also, this, this quantity is also a hyperbolic function of E, which means there is a trade-off among E. Indeed, more log updates means less communication, but as mentioned, slows down the convergence rate. The second thing we show is that diminishing learning rate is crucial for convergence of fabric average in the non-IID setting. Specifically, we construct a range regression which is con strongly convex and smooth. We show that if the learning rate doesn't decay, the solution produced by federated average will always away from the optimal point. Specifically, we have the following lower bound. First, we want to say that in our example, we use full batch gradient and full device participation. So there is nothing random. So we, and we don't need to eliminate the effects of gradient variance by decaying the learning rate. But our results show that it is still crucial for fat average to decay the learning rate. This can be revealed by the observation that when E equals to 1, under this case, fat average is reduced to full batch gradient, which could converge without decaying learning rate. However, as long as E is larger than 1, even with sufficient small but fixed learning rate, fat average may not converge to the optimal. This doesn't mean that it will diverge. Actually, in our example, it will only converge to a suboptimal point whose distance to the original optimal point is controlled by both the learning rate and the number of log updates E. So why does this happen? Since data are not ID, the minimizer of each local objective function vary. The local updates will push local model parameters move towards its local minimizer instead of the global minimizer. Therefore, constant learning rate combined with multiple steps of possibly biased local updates form a suboptimal local update scheme. But a diminishing learning rate can gradually eliminate this bias. Diminishing step size often hinders fast convergence, which may counteract the benefits of perform multiple local updates. The theoretic, this our theory motivates more efficient alternative to fat average. Finally, I conclude our findings as follows. First, fat average will converge even if the data is non id but we should assume some assumptions like convexity and smoothness. Second, the convergence rate is affected by the degree of non id The last, it's very important to, de to decay the learning rate for fat average in order to converge to the optimal point. That's all my presentation. Thank you.